Hello, and welcome back to Poetry of a Penguin. Today, Kirby and I would like to delve into modern Bengali poetry, translated into English, and then turn to some Saskatchewan writers guild poets and look at some poetry in inspired by their retreats over at St. Peter's Abbey in Munster, Saskatchewan, a place you may be familiar with. But as to the Bengali poetry, we'll do that first. And we should explain for those who may not be familiar with the uh, country that Bengal is nowadays a region of the Indian subcontinent uh, that now straddles across the border of India and Bangladesh. Now, if you've heard of any famous poet or author from there, I'm going to guess that would be uh, Rabindranath Tagore who was born in 1861 and who in 1913 became the first non-European to win the Nobel Prize for Literature for the English language version of his 1912 collection, uh, Gitanjali or Song Offerings. He also wrote prose, drama, novels, novellas, short stories, some of which have been made into films uh, by Bollywood you know, industry over the decades. Uh, one of the more recent adaptations being a TV series, which you may actually be able to find on, on Canada and Netflix, uh, called Simply Stories of Rabindranath Tagore. Now, if by chance you can name a second poet from that area, it would likely be Kazi Nazrul Islam, or just Nazrul Islam, who was born in 1899 and ended up being adopted as the official sort of national poet of Bangladesh. Now, both of these poets were also sort of great uh, patriots in their own right, who gave birth not only to modern Bengali verse, freed from sort of conventional forms of the medieval and classical era of Bengali poetry, but also by their vision, uh, helped to awaken their, their countrymen to the cause of national independence and anti-colonialism. Now, you might wonder how I ever came to discover sort of Bengali poetry for myself or become interested in it, since in North America, it's not typically is well known. As a matter of fact, I came to discover it through, of all things, uh, an American horror novel by author named uh, Dan Simmons, whose 1985 book, uh, Song of, of Kali, centered around the city of Calcutta in Bengal, and would begin every chapter with a quotation from this or that Bengali poet, uh, since the plot of the novel actually involved the protagonist who is a poetry editor for an American literary magazine in New England. He, he must go to Calcutta to try to find and, and have an interview with a famous poet there who is apparently publishing again, even though he was supposed to have died. I mean, he's supposed to resolve this mystery, see if it's a fraud or what, what thing is going on there, you know, really. Anyway, I won't spoil that book for you in case you want to read that someday, but if you fancy a mixture of literary intrigue and supernatural horror, I do recommend it. It's not bad at all. Now then, being always a curious sort, as I say, one day I finally started to look up, you know, these names you know, of unknown authors, and then that led me to discover some of their works in translation and discover the sort of larger milieu of Bengali literature and poetry. You know, I gradually became interested in it with its roots in medieval sort of tantric religious visionary experiences and devotional lyrics. And uh, as a result, Kirby and I have picked out a few samples uh, for today's first uh, recitations. Now then, given his gigantic stature in Bengali and even world literature, we must start with the bard of Bengal himself, Tagore, whose stature was so immense that some of his verses were chosen uh, to be the official lyrics to the national anthems of both India and uh, in Bangladesh, after Bangladesh broke away from Pakistan. Now, this is his poem called uh, Open the Doors. Open the doors, lay bare the azure sky. Let the inquiring fragrance of flowers enter my room. Let the first sunlight suffuse my every vein, every artery. I am alive, these salivatory words, the rustling leaves murmur. Let me hear. May this morning drape my mind with its own vestment, like it covers the meadows, green with new sprouts. All the love I have found in my life, I hear resounded in silent words, in the sky, in the air. I bathe today in that blessed anointment, the reality of my whole life, like a bejeweled necklace I see imprinted 
on the breast of the blue. That was uh, Open the Doors by Tagore. Next, we have Nasrul Islam, whose passionate activism and works actually led him to be jailed by the British Raj, you know, the authorities, you know, for incitement and subversion. And indeed, his, his most famous poems, The Rebel and The Song of Destruction, are quite, quite radically stirring indeed. So. But nevertheless, I'm quite fond uh, of the following poem by him. It's called The Song of Dawn in Nasrul Islam. So we will read this. It's dawn. Open the door, wake up, Kukumoni. The jasmine flowers from their vines are calling you to come running. Wake up, Kukumoni. Uncle Sun is crawling out, all dressed in a crimson shirt. Listen, the gatekeeper is singing his song, Ramahoy. The birds are leaving their nests to fly in the sky. Listen to them, singing continuously, filling the morning air. The restless booble birds whistle from flower to flower. This time, this time, Kukumoni will open her eyes. Setting the rudder, hoisting the sail, the boat begins its journey. This time, this time, Kukumoni has opened her eyes. Lazy, she's not. She's an early riser. That's why Brother Moon gives a teep every day for her. Up and running, all the little boys and girls listen to them babbling about who woke up first. Nights, wash up, wake up, Kukumoni. Well, for him, let's begin asking for a blessing from God. That was the song of dawn, as it was long. Next, we have a poem from uh, Shankya Ghosh. Ghosh was born 1932 in Bengal and studied Bengali literature at the university in Calcutta. Today, he's 88 years old. He's still a prominent poet and literary critic with a large body of published works, poetry and otherwise. And Kirby particularly picked out the storm of desire, that Shankya Ghosh will recite. In this hovering, soundless solitude, in the abundant, lonesome winds of this dark evening, you turn up your white, pale face, cold as a cloud, lightless like the moon, towards the enormous sky. From a faraway land I tremble with the unbearable agony of desire, Bunched around your white stone of a face, thin wisps of hair tremble in the dark wind, like so many fingers extended in pain, in prayer. The corner of the sky grows heavy with clustering clouds. Flashes of longing tear through with repeated ferocity. Tidal waves of love seeking to burst forth in tremendous ecstasy agitate the unbounded distances within the darkness the somber complexion of a reflective, unmoving land. You turn up your face, cold as a cloud, lightless like the moon. Your breasts are like undulations of a land that has wept itself to weary stillness. You stretch out your anxious, wasted arms, long expectant, prayer tired, towards that furious, enormous sky. Around them cluster darkness, wisps of hair, a thousand musical notes, in the boundless lonesome winds. Slowly creation reaches readiness, as if in one terrible, blessedly sweet moment, the clouds of its desire break forth in bolts of unbearable thunder, piercing the middle of your outspread breast, eager, upturned, towards the total bliss of union. Then banishing all rubbish from this wet, disheveled, tumble-down world, transpires a beautiful, cool, caressing morning. That was The Storm of Desire by Shankya Ghosh. Jumadananda Das is our final uh, poet from Bengal for the moment, and he's an important name, often coming right after Tagore and Nasrul, by whom he was influenced before he went on in his more mature work to develop his own unique style and diction. He was quite the recluse, however, and although a few volumes of his poetry, I think about seven of them, were published during his own lifetime. It was only after his death that people found out that in the privacy of his home, he'd actually written over a hundred short stories, over 20 novels. So you thought J.D. Salinger was shy, but no, this guy, no. Well, the following is this poem entitled uh, Dawn. Sky, the soft blue of a grasshopper's body, guava and custard apple trees all around, green as parrot feathers. 
A single star remains in the sky, like the most twilight intoxicated girl, in some village bridal chamber. For that pearl from her bosom, the Egyptian dipped into my glass of Nile blue wine. One night, some thousands of years ago, just so in the sky shines a single star. To warm their bodies through the cold night, upcountry menials kept a fire going in the field. Red fire like a coxcomb blossom, still burning, contorting dry ashvata leaves. Its color in the light of the sun is no longer that of saffron, but has paled like wan desires of a sickly shalik bird's heart. In the morning's light, both sky and the surrounding dew-dampened forest sparkle like blue-green peacock wings. Dawn. All night long, a handsome nut-brown buck, bounding from Sundari through Arjun forest in starless, mahogany-like darkness, avoids the cheetah's grasp. He'd been waiting for this dawn. Down he came in its glow, ripping, munching fragrant grass, green as young and tender grapefruit. Down he came to the river's stinging, tingling ripples, to instill his sleepless, weary, overwhelmed body with the current's driving force, to feel a thrill like that of dawn bursting through the cold and weazened womb of darkness, to awake like golden sun spears beneath this blue sky and dazzle with his beauty, boldness, sheer desire, doe after doe. A strange sound, the river's water scarlet like matchka flower petals, Again the fire crackled, red venison served hot. Many an old dew dampened yarn while seated on a bed of grass beneath the stars. Cigarette smoke, several human heads hair neatly parted. Guns here and there, icy calm, guiltless sleep. And that is the end of uh, Dawn, of that poet. And this is the end of the first recitations. As to the second series, um, the Saskatchewan series, I should mention that I myself have been out to St. Peter's Abbey and have benefited from their hospitality several times. I stayed there uh, not as a member of the Saskatchewan Writers Guild, but as just you know, a private person um, in one of the general guest wings they have there. I certainly do recommend it if you want some peace and quiet in the countryside. Uh, you're going on a retreat at some time. Food, wonderful, and your, your host, the monks, the Benedictines are wonderful. And you certainly don't have to be Catholic, or for that matter, even you know, religious, uh, to, to go there. So don't don't feel bashful or shy about that or comfortable. So, anyway, the first poem from Saskatchewan Writers Guild is Adam Dickinson's "Father Demetrius's Bees," and Father Demetrius is one of the Benedictines out there. I've met. And he did indeed keep bees, at least when I was there. So all day over the canola, small prayers for the sun. If love could quit its veins, its chemical language, the airy transmogrification of trembling hands, the clots that build dark hills in the chest, it would be these small sparks, these lanterns that explain plants to each other, that return home at night and write the first desires of things in moonlight sugar. Because we cannot simply stand in the sun, because in reality there is no single honeysuckle, no hummingbird tuning the vows of the heart. They work in the name of abundance, of gift. To live is to stick to things, honey in the hands, the simplest wish crowded with wings. It is said that when the beekeeper retires, he becomes allergic to the venom of bees. What love asks so much? All day over the canola, the fresh wax of introductions, the first deposits of fat in the catacombs of the heart. Uh, the Demetrius of Bees by Adam Dickinson. And the next one, Kirby in particular picked out, Jeanette Lines, Silence at St. Peter's Abbey, Night. We are the stunt ravens, all swoop and good intentions, not without our devious joys, our undercurrents. One of the silent ones, one of us, in the lane way at dusk, I saw her. Her sneakers barely skimmed the gravel, she has learned well. Voice will get through. Thrum, fetch what it can, not the stale vocal cords that thrum distant and strange across the postcard scrawled with all the requisite lies, but new, nuanced cause, tuned to the attenuations between, humble in the face of no words for having flown. Good night, sweet birds, may you dream polylinguistic dreams, 
In a few hours, we'll break the sound barrier. We will have many things to speak about. Mr. Nine silence sent to Peter Zabi. Finally, we have Alan Safarik, Safarik, pardon me for getting it wrong, his witness. In the leaden winter, 40 below, dark limbed spruce trees with hoary beards appear ghostly in ice fog. Even the sleepers in the graveyard, sheltered by frosted hedges, hear the bell banging on God's door. Down the hall, Brother Gerald's canary begins its morning song of redemption to its alienated mate, brooding for a lover. Sudden bursts of color, sadder than the wilderness, travel down the polished linoleum. The oleander in newly blo opened bloom, reflected in courtyard windows, trembles flamingo pink and fragrant against the drifting veil of snow. It wouldn't last two minutes on the outside. It's a good thing the monks, devotion and obedience etched in their faces like an occupational hazard, are singing prayers for the living. The moment of truth is upon us, all the bare fields silent as eternity. And that was Witness by Alan Safar. And again, I like how, uh, I know the two very different countries, in fact, I'm not sure you can find more different countries. You know, there's some frozen prairies of Saskatchewan uh, and the sort of intense tropical heat of Bengal. Very different cultures, you know, different religious traditions, you know, more than one different religious tradition, of course, but nevertheless, a sort of uh, mystical inspiration from both uh, spirituality and nature, I thought had an interesting, uh, you know, present for an interesting mix, interesting intertextuality, you know, as it were, you know, so different offers, you know, put together, you know, seeing the world through different lens that way. So I just thought it was an interesting combination for today. Anyway, I think that's it for our second uh, episode of Poetry of a Penguin. So I uh, hope to see you again uh, very soon for the third installation.